Will this destroy my printer? Only time will tell. Filament dryers are a scam. Kind of. Ever since I started this channel, which basically coincides with me starting out in 3D printing, I've heard countless times that you need a filament dryer. The enemy is at the gates, and that enemy is a slick mistress known as humidity. But I print almost exclusively with PLA, my working environment is relatively controlled humidity-wise, and even with fluctuations in temperature, I've rarely seen anything that I'd consider to be defects with a print due to wet filament. And that's why my high-tech storage solution for my filaments is the cardboard boxes that they came in with the packet of desiccant that they came with, and so far, so good. However, I did recently receive an email from the lovely folks at ABOS, or E-I-B-O-S, I guess, as I believe the acronym stands for Excellent Ideas Based on Structure. I'm going to go with ABOS, mostly because I thought their logo was a person wearing a hat and sunglasses poking their tongue out until I tilted my head to the side and realised that it was just ABOS, or E-I-B-O-S, written out all fancy. Anyway, I digress. They emailed me saying that they'd seen the channel and that they wanted to know if I wanted to try out one of their filament dryers. So. To be clear, I will be using their product in this video, however no money has changed hands and they were very clear that this is purely a product for me to try out and if I wanted to feature it in a video, I could, but no stress if not. So I accepted and then rather cheekily asked for a roll of TPU as well because I figured testing it out with PLA was going to be pretty lacklustre, so thanks ABOS. Now onto the real, uh, you know, topic at hand, are filament dryers a scam or not? Well, the one liner is that it depends on what you're printing with, so let's unpack that. Unlike my previous videos, I'm going to be actually a little bit more structured with this experiment rather than just kind of going with the vibe. But don't get me wrong, there won't be any hard science in this one. We're talking masking tape notes and sort of eyeballing the results. You can see over my shoulder there. So how am I going to break this down? Well, I've never actually printed a Benchy, surprisingly or not, so I figured that this is the perfect opportunity. We're going to compare five different prints. So we'll start with PLA, as is, the way I currently do it. No fancy storage, just sitting on the AMS, bog standard. Then we're going to take that roll of PLA and we're going to give it a little schwitz, get it nice and wet and print with literally wet filament. Will this destroy my printer? Only time will tell. Then we'll dry that roll of filament for a few hours and print from the dryer. Then we'll move on to that cheeky roll of TPU. We'll print fresh out of the bag with no drying and then we'll dry it for a day and print again. All right, less yapping, more printing. First print, like I said, was as is a roll of PLA mat that has been sitting on my AMS for a couple of weeks at this point. The sensor on my little print tent down here said it was 18 degrees Celsius and 58% humidity when the print started and after a quick benchy 30 minutes or so, we ended at 20 degrees, 53% humidity and the result was pretty much as expected. Pretty good, no crazy defects, a pretty standard result for a quick print with no settings particularly dialed in. Oh, and for the record, the PLA benchies I'm using for this one are the ones that I found on Maker World under the Bamboo Lab page. Using the standard print profile, it comes with no changes there. And for the TPU one later on, I'm using this print that someone dialed in for their flavor of TPU, and I figured it would be close enough to use as a profile to compare for this test. So now that we've done the bog standard PLA, we're going to move on to the wet PLA. And I was wondering how best to do this. I didn't want to just run a roll of filament under the tap. I figured that would, one, kind of be insane, and two, probably wouldn't be a good demonstration of how a roll of filament actually takes on moisture, which is via humidity and not literally pouring water onto it. So I created this little steam room in my microwave, a bowl of water zapped for about a minute, and then I simply placed the roll of filament into that little hot box for about 10 minutes on each side. And no, I didn't microwave my filament. Do not do that. So this little 20 minute schwitz resulted in a roll of filament that was visibly wet, like this thing was slick. I don't know if I can say that this filament itself was actually saturated all the way through, but the first few layers were at least actually wet to the touch. So wet to the touch, I figured pretty good for a test, I guess. I loaded this wet boy back into the AMS and sent the same Benchy to print. Immediately I heard some popping sounds upon the wet filament extruding, which is the water rapidly boiling and then popping, releasing the steam. Uh, and this can result in bubbly filament and is one of the key features of printing with wet filament and what you're supposed to be looking out for. So my little schwitz had worked. So the stats on this one, I started at 19 degrees Celsius, 56% uh, humidity and ended with 20 degrees and 52%. And it's pretty much exactly the same as the first print. Absolutely, well, no real difference. Tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of string, but really nothing out of the ordinary. Certainly nothing that screams, this roll of filament had a relaxing 20 minute schwitz in the steam room before we printed this Benchy. Moving on. 
So the ABOS, E-I-B-O-S, dryer that was sent to me comes in parts and you have to assemble it, but honestly, for tinkerers like us, that's no problem. Goes together really easily. Doesn't look too offensive on the shelf. Uh, it holds two rolls of one kilo filament and also comes with an extender section, which I didn't set up, that will allow you to accommodate up to two three kilo rolls. And the controls for it are pretty straightforward. Like most people, I didn't read the instructions. I just hit the buttons and has a bunch of presets for each type of filament in here. Uh, in the interest of speed, I threw our formerly Spitz roll of filament into this dryer at 50 degrees for two hours. I know you're supposed to do a little bit longer for PLA, but I figured two hours was good enough for a test. I then for some reason went to pretty decent amounts of effort to yank the printer out of its little safety tent to do this next test print with the roll of filament in the dryer, mostly to get some sexy product shots of it all working together. And man, do I miss having the printer out on the bench like this. It looks so much cooler than what it looks like now where it's just shoved in the tent underneath the bench. But I digress, I still, prefer not sitting in a room full of plastic, yeah. Now the stats on this one, the filament in the dryer was sitting in an environment that was 53 degrees and 10% humidity. And although the printer wasn't in the tent for this one, the ambient room temperature was saying about 21 degrees and 50% humidity. And the results are pretty much exactly the same as the first two prints. I honestly cannot tell the difference between these three PLA prints. So as far as PLA prints go, I'm going to go ahead and call it. You do not need a filament dryer, unless you live in a place that's like got really swampy humidity all year round. I do not need a filament dryer for PLA and I will probably never put PLA back into this filament dryer onto the TPU. Now this is the first time I'm printing with TPU. I know there's a lot of different types, but this roll from EIBOS EBOS, uh, sent to me uh, is a TPU 95A. So make of that what you will. Fresh out the bag, I popped this onto the AMS, got that all synced up in Bamboo Studio, made sure to correctly tag that it's TPU in the AMS section of the preview page and loaded up the TPU specific benchy that I mentioned earlier on, tried to send that off to the printer and was told that apparently the AMS doesn't support TPU. So undo all of that, forget I misstepped. Um, Let's move on, thanks. So instead I just opted to sit the roll of filament next to the print tent. And yes, I'm back into the print tent for this one because I do not trust TPU. Uh, so yeah, I sat the roll on the dryer and just to be clear, it's not on. I'm just using the rollers to help feed that filament into the printer. Okay, whatever, move on. What does it print like? Yeah, well, this is actually where we start to see some moisture issues. And to be honest, this is kind of what I expected. For the record, we were at 21 degrees and 50% humidity for this one. And you can see just how stringy and awful it is, how bubbly and imperfect the surface is, and just generally how crappy it looks. Now, to be fair, I've never printed with TPU it. So at this point, I'm like, maybe just thinking that TPU prints like this. I don't know. Um, let's try drying it. So into the dryer it went and I did eight hours at 60 degrees Celsius. And this is based on the settings in the dryer uh, for TPU specifically. And I had seen on some sites that it's recommended that you do TPU for 24 hours. Um, however, I've never worked with these dryers before. So I wasn't super keen to just leave it on overnight unattended. So I picked eight hours while I was working. So now the eight hours are up and we're printing from the dryer. Um, in this footage, it's dark now. Time continues to slowly march forward, but just ignore that. The filament in the dryer is sitting at 60 degrees Celsius, 10% humidity, whilst the print tent is reading 26 degrees and 47% humidity for those still playing along. And my gosh, TPU is pretty when you print it right. Filament dryers aren't a scam after all. This is exactly what they're for. Look how smooth this is. Almost no defects, and keeping in mind I only dried it for a third of the recommended time, it's got lovely texture on the bottom from the PEI plate, barely any stringing in these little portholes, and a lovely glossy finish. There's a little slumping here in the bridge section, but you know, keep in mind that this is a benchy and it's not printing with any real supports, so in a real world print that would be mitigated. It's very safe to say that I am impressed. And on that note, what should I work on now that I have this roll of TPU and the dryer to go with it? Hit me up in the comments. And what do you print with that requires a dryer? Are you just sending it raw like I do with PLA? Or are you in a place that requires a dryer for all types of filaments at all times or otherwise you've got sweaty rolls? And thanks again to ABOS, E-I-B-O-S. Uh, much appreciated. Thank you, good stuff. And for those of you who are still sticking around to this point, you might be interested in the completely free Patreon that I've set up. And I wanna reiterate, this is completely free. So I'm going to be uploading any YouTube videos over on Patreon a day earlier. And don't worry, I'm under no illusion that you're all waiting with bated breath for a built video to drop. It's more to give you an opportunity to watch it ad free over there. And you know, a day earlier doesn't hurt. 
I also have a bunch of footage and extra videos that I've captured through the process of making these YouTube videos that sort of simply don't work for the format of this channel, but are pretty interesting nonetheless. And I think Patreon is gonna be a perfect place to pop those up and share. For instance, I have this pretty calming like assemble and chill video that I cut together from the footage I shot when I upgraded the AMS to be top mounted. It's like 20 minutes or so, no talking, just, you know, 3D printing and assembling. Um, won't work on YouTube, well, not for this channel, but I thought it might be interesting to some people. So I'll be putting up Patreon exclusive videos over there and uploading all of the YouTube videos a day early to watch ad free. And to be really, really clear, it is all going to be free. So if you're interested, check it out in the link below or search built on Patreon. Uh, maybe see you over there.